Hey everybody, welcome to Cut Transform Glow, and here's something that I think I've never showed you guys before. So this right here is one of my first scratch build projects that I've made many, many years ago, way before I even dreamed about having a YouTube channel. And at the time, my tools and my skills were so limited that I want to revisit that idea. As always, I began selecting some cool shapes I had around, like this couple of soup bowl lids and the shell of a broken Bluetooth speaker. From there, as I've been doing lately, I made a quick layouting of the shapes to check on the proportions. And here's what I want to do. I want to use both orange lids to make the body and the Bluetooth shell to make the head, which will hold an energy weapon. It was also important at that stage to figure out the size and geometry of the legs, so I did that using plywood and some aluminum wire. Once I figured out the proportions of this project, I could start working on the pieces, beginning with the head. It had some features in the middle that I didn't like, so I removed it with my Dremel tool. I then decided to cover that hole using a plastic gear, so I chucked it into my drill press and sanded off a bit of its teeth. As you can see, not much had to be removed and the fit was perfect. I just then sanded the edges so they looked good and I attached it there using some CA glue. Now that was the top. For the bottom, I created a custom piece with a steel axle to create a sturdy pivoting point. Originally, both halves were tightly attached together, but I kind of liked that extra space in between them. So I carefully measured and analyzed the pieces and made a custom spacer for it. Then I sanded every piece and attached everything together with some CA glue. I was pretty much done with the top shape, but I had this idea that would really help me in the future. I made this custom 3D printer piece right here with a couple of embedded M4 nuts that will later in the future help me securely attach the energy weapon. From that I moved down to the body of the robot. So the first thing I did was figuring out a way to keep both halves separated to the last painting steps. So I made four quarter rings and glued them on the bottom piece. And as you can see, there's a bunch of M4 nuts embedded in this piece. This is for the future in case I wanna hang something on the side of the robot. I didn't really need the handle of the soup bowl lid. So yeah, I tried removing it, but the plastic was very sturdy. Eventually I got there with my Dremel tool and I only made one hole on my fingers, which is an evolution if you ask me. Then I made a custom piece with a gribbly on the middle which fitted perfectly on the steel shaft I had going on the head. I glued it on the top half of the body using some CA glue and baking soda, but I decided to reinforce that bond with some epoxy glue. And while I was messing with some epoxy glue, which I hate, I decided to actually refine some of the shapes of the head using epoxy putty. Before it was even 100% set, I began sculpting it with this precision knife and using a plastic tube with some sanding paper wrapped around it, I did some sanding and this right here is the final shape. Okay, so now let's talk about the legs and this project has a bunch of them. As you can see, I made some drawings of the shapes I wanted on the legs and as recently I took a trip to the 
public makerspace, I decided to actually go ahead and trace those on SketchUp and cut those on the laser CNC using some 5mm acrylic. Now I know some of you might be typing right now that this is cheating, not scrap building, because I'm using the laser CNC for the pieces. Here's the thing, there are four legs in this project. This is a ton of work, not to mention it is uh, very hard to find like four exact copies of Griblis. So yeah, I'm happy to use the laser CNC for this project. But before I could begin gluing the acrylic pieces, I needed a way to attach the legs to the body of the robot. So I took a ton of measurements, I made a bunch of lines as you can see, to keep everything as aligned as possible, and I drilled four holes using a hole saw. And I decided to use this plastic ball right here to create the ball joints for each leg. Let me know in the comments if you know where this plastic ball was first shown right here on this channel. But anyways, I then made some perfectly matching sockets for each ball and as this project has a ton of curves, I had to fill some gaps with more epoxy putty. Have I ever told you guys how much I hate working with epoxy putty? But yeah, as always, before it was 100% set, I did some sculpting and sanding and I filled some extra gaps I found and yeah, this right here was the result. So then I could finally work on the leg segment. Beginning with some sanding, not only to help the glue, but also to help you guys see what I'm working with. Now the acrylic shapes were going to be stacked together to achieve a certain thickness and on the files I took to the laser CNC I included an indexing hole as you can see right there. That way I could keep everything as aligned as possible uh, when gluing the pieces together. I should also mention right here that the glue I'm using right there is some type of weld bond glue which works super well with acrylic and allows for some last minute adjustments. And of course all of that had to be made for each each leg segment. Now to be honest, I prepared the leg CNC files in a hurry, so my shapes weren't super refined. So after I stacked all of the shapes, I made some markings on the surface and refined my shapes on my mini disk center. At that point, I decided to actually round the edges of the leg segments. And I did that using this jig right here I made for my Dremel tool and this round corner bit. After I rounded every corner on every leg segment, I made some bigger changes on each individual piece. This was super time consuming because acrylic is very hard, but I think the result paid out. But the acrylic shapes did not cover the entire leg geometry, and I knew this when I was cutting the pieces. I wanted to leave some room for changes. So I made this custom 3D printed piece which matches perfectly the plastic ball joint, and it had some holes where I could fit some 8mm aluminum rods just to make everything super strong. Over the pink pieces, I included some custom-made resin pieces. These are available actually for my patrons on the Combat Robot tier. So if you want to have access to these files, head over to my Patreon page. The link's on the description box. Then I decided to include some very old keyboard caps I had in my collection. But before I did that, I did some sanding to remove the concave feature from the top, which is very telling of what it is. And from that I went adding a bunch of different types of griblies, like some resin printer pieces from older projects, some uh, acrylic shapes here and there, and a ton of different stuff. After a while, this right here was the result, but as you can see, the robot was still missing its feet. Now, this time I actually decided to try something different, and I want this robot to go on wheels. This is something that I never did before, I think, on a project, but the overall design of this robot is super round and it has a ton of curves, so yeah, I thought that wheels would match it perfectly. 
I then made an ankle piece with an XO for the wheel and the leg was pretty much complete. The only challenge then was to make the three other copies of the leg. Yeah, that was super time consuming, but the laser CNC saved my wig and this was actually a super fun process. Now with every piece pretty much done for this robot, I could finally put the first coat of primer on this project, which is already super big as you can see by the amount of pieces. But yeah, this right here is the result and I'm very happy with what I'm seeing. Let me know in the comments what you think. And as always, thanks for watching.